pop culture pastor. I don't understand, Cody, why you got to be so stinking contrarian all the time. <laughs> Like, he's literally sitting here before we hit record, like, I'm going to break this pod. <laughs> I'm going to break this episode. We're never, you're never going to want to do this again. And I'm like, how am I supposed to be encouraged by that? I feel like it's about mailing it in. I'm just be like, well, that's the pod, everybody. Guess we'll go home and cry now. I didn't say I was going to break it in a bad way. <laughs> See, he thinks chaos, Jackson, is good. Controversy creates cash. <laughs> well, I've yet to see any of that <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for, folks. <sighs> this is Pop Culture Pastor, the podcast. My name is Dave. Contrarian Cody is here. <laughs> Soon to be capitalist Cody. Oh, but great. Yes. Well, we got that to look forward to, Jackson. Absolutely. Capitalist Cody is coming to save the day. And by save the day, I mean crush my dreams. You're welcome. <laughs> and of course, geek uh, Jackson Chauncey is here. I haven't figured out my nickname yet. Put it in the comments, everybody. J.C. Chazé. J.C. <laughs> the second most talented member of NSYNC. I thought you were going to say the second most talented J.C. <laughs> yeah. That it tracks, fits. too. It fits. Uh, all right. So we are here to, uh, you know, have a podcast that Cody is going to bring to a screeching halt at some point. You don't know when and you don't know how. That's whew, I'm just getting all the warm and fuzzies. Uh, let's start with news. We're going to talk about DC Comics movies. I've heard of them. Exclusively in the news segment here. Oh, nice. James Gunn did an interview. My friend Jimmy. Your your good, good friend Jimmy. He was talking about Creature Commandos. Are you familiar with what Creature Commandos are? Not super. Scotty definitely was because Scotty's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is what's first. I'm so excited. Here's what Entertainment Weekly says about Creature Commandos is a spiky story about monstrous characters wrestling with their dark pasts. The show features an assortment of characters, both familiar and strange. Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Phosphorus, the fish like Nina Mazursky. I like how she just has a regular name. (laughs) Uh, Weasel and G.I. Robot. Bill Johnson. And they're sent on dangerous missions by government official Amanda Waller. Because that's all Amanda does. She's like, oh, you bunch of ragamuffins, you go save the world over here. While this bunch of ragamuffins saves the world over there. So she's like a kind of a weird alternate Nick Fury. Yes. Yeah. Because she her her motives are sometimes in question. Does she always use the explosives in the neck or the head or wherever they were in oh the suicide squad yeah. thing i don't know was that a comic book thing i'm less familiar with dc comics uh the, especially the the not main characters well so i mean it's going to be with rogue villains but not when she has like oh justice league we need assistance yeah so anyways james gunn was doing this interview for Entertainment Weekly, and I thought he, I thought he said a couple of interesting things because he was talking about Creature Commandos and how it's kind of the kickoff for his DC universe, and it's animated. Is it really? I'm ninety five percent certain. Oh yeah, adult animated series about misfit monsters. Okay, premiering December fifth, so it comes out before Superman. Hmm. Uh, he says this. The thing is. The thing I've always loved about DC Comics was that you had your mainstream comics that always ran, but they also had these tonally different comics like Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns and All-Star Superman, Gunn tells Entertainment Weekly. He says it was different from Marvel in that way. That's something that I really want to retain within the studio, that every project is going to bring a different vision by the artists who are creating it. So I want to start with the first part of that. DC has these kind of under the radar comics i would compare it to marvel's guardians of the galaxy but that's not tonal it wasn't super tonally different it was just kind of an under the radar thing Mm -hmm. because i think he's right like dc always had these weird outliers like metal men yep he he says watchman all-star superman that was a weird thing to throw in there well he's saying like while the main Superman storyline's going, there's still these alternate versions at times as well of your main guys that are tonally different. I see. All-Star Superman was great, by the way. 
Yes. And The Dark Knight, which he referenced, I mean, it's totally different than your yeah, previous Batman versions. That's Frank Miller. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's interesting because Marvel, the stuff outside the norm was really just Guardians. Everything else was big hitter, big hitter, big hitter. Spider-Man, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America. These are all big names in the Marvel Universe. Uh, do, you, do you want a DC Universe that throws in creature commandos? That, that could throw in a Metal Men movie? I do. I think that you have these interesting niche characters and stories that you're going to get your hardcore fans to watch. And then... You're going to get some people to try out, and they're going to be introduced to them, and they're going to either like them or not. Um, now, I do like that this is an animated series. This isn't something that they're like, we need to make a $200 million movie about the creature commandos, because that'd just be a waste of money. You're not going to make that back. Not with no one really knowing who the creature commandos are. And I do like that he threw in the Superman All-Star, Dark Knight, uh, Batman, because he's keeping the Batman franchise separate while having a Batman story in his universe. And so it's like an Elseworlds project, which DC did phenomenally that like oh we'll keep this main run going while having these separate runs and you can pick and choose what you like it's interesting because i think where marvel has gotten in trouble is just this pace this we got to get all this stuff into production we're going to get it out there and we're going to write it on the fly and it ends up being rewrites and rewrites because you get actors that get in trouble and they get fired and then you have to rewrite your entire story five thousand times I think that's where Marvel's gotten in trouble. Meanwhile, over at Warner Brothers, who's not known for their restraint, they seem to be showing, or at least James Gunn seems to be showing restraint and patience. Instead of the normal Warner Brothers thing would be, we got to get this out here and make all the monies. I was going to say, the Superman movie, they could have bumped that up. Yeah, but they're, and, and they're not like, they don't have a bunch of things in production. They have a bunch of ideas. Mm-hmm. But there's not, there's not like the next three movies aren't in production right now, which I find very interesting and I find encouraging because I think that's what got Marvel in trouble. I think Marvel loved the money and Disney loved the money. And so they just like, all right, next eight things in production right now. And you're just like, come on, why? We don't need five movies a year and two series. Not if they're garbage. That's definitely true. And so I, I am cautiously optimistic about the DC universe in film under the leadership of James Gunn, as long as he keeps showing restraint and patience. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Um, The other bit of DC news that I thought Cody uh, would especially have a reaction to. It appears we talked last week that uh, Josh Brolin was offered the role of Hal Jordan in a series called lanterns about the green lantern Corps. I think it's an amazing idea to say, we're not going to make a movie about one of the lanterns. Let's do a series about the green lantern core. I think that's brilliant. But Josh Brolin was offered the part, but we, we, I think we said last week he was leaning towards turning it down potentially. And I think there's no official word of course, cause it's none of it's official, but the buzz is that he did turn it down. And now they're turning to a couple of guys. First up is Chris Pine. Now, Again, we get into this thing where like, or do we not have enough actors? Why do we keep why do we keep going back to these same actors who have p- appeared albeit in a different version, but in your universe before? Chris Pine was in both Wonder Woman movies. Mhm. And I just think it's confusing. Like there's other actors, go get one. But that's apparently first up as Chris Pine. Thoughts? He would be good. I mean, I know he'd be good. It goes back to like he was recently in DC movies. Literally. Like Wonder Woman 84 is one of the last ones. With Josh Brolin, you could say he was in a DC movie with Jonah Hex, but that was forever ago and no one watched it. And that was one of those offshoot lower properties that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, Jonah Hex is a cool character. Very much so. Just um, not executed well on film. So, yeah. I mean, Jackson, do you have any thoughts on Chris Pine? Uh, Other than he's not Kurt Russell? 
well, <laughs> that's always the first thought. I talked with Cody about it, and I'm of the belief that he could pull it off, but it wouldn't be anything memorable. It wouldn't be anything different. He's kind of a you-know-what-you're-getting type of guy. There's not a lot of nuance in a lot of his performance that I've seen. Yeah, I feel like the most memorable thing Chris Pine has done, the most memorable performance was the Don't Worry Darling uh, interview tour. Remember there's the when they're at the premiere and he's it's he's sitting there and what's his name comes up from Harry one direction. Styles. Yeah, Harry Styles comes up, he has this like very annoyed look. <laughs> Did he spit on him? The, Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, potentially that Harry might have spit on Chris. <laughs> that was the most engaging and fascinating Chris Pine has ever been to me. <laughs> Um, I liked him in the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Now, see, I haven't seen that yet. I probably should. I probably I always forget that it's out there because it didn't make much noise. It, I mean, I it was to funny. Watch it. Yeah, I think I need to watch that. But like, like you're right, Chris Pine. He's one. He's easy to look at. He's a good looking dude, so that's why studios like him. And two, he's solid. Like, he's going to do a good job. He just doesn't stand out. He's McDonald's. You know what you're getting. You're probably going to have an all right time, but you're going to forget what you just ate five and I, minutes later. Exactly. And I would imagine he is a decent draw. Like, he's a name you can put on a poster and be like, oh, Chris Pine. And then, you know, maybe you get some girlfriends of comic nerds who are like, okay, I'll go see this movie because Chris Pine's in it. Maybe. The other one, the other possibility here is one that, I think Cody is going to really go crazy for because they say the rumor is, is that if pine and then Matthew McConaughey, so Matthew McConaughey is in this too, just out there roaming around. Yeah. Apparently they've offered it to pine, but if he turns it down and McConaughey's not interested, which it seems like he wouldn't be, I don't know why he'd be interested in this. It's not his thing. If he's not interested, then the role, this is all allegedly because it's rumor would be offered to Timothy Oliphant. Be still my heart. <laughs> Cody. <laughs> what would Cody do to have Timothy Oliphant in the DC universe as Hal Jordan? Multiple things. Laws would be broken. <laughs> Honestly, it would be a home run. I feel just because Timothy Oliphant does have some range. Um, does he? Scream 2 is vastly different than who he is in Justified or The Mandalorian. Now, people love it when he talks with his drawl. So, yeah. So, early on in his career, he played a lot of roles like Scream 2. But then recently, you said his drawl. He's got like this kind of southern slash I've got the western bow-legged cowboy thing going on. Even though he's from California. Is he really? I'm pretty sure I'd he's never from Modesto. That. Well, we just we just uh, confirmed how amazing of an actor he is. So he was in a superhero esque property before. I am four. I've number never heard four. of it. Our number four. Yeah, number four. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Um, it was good. It there were supposed to be sequels, but no one watched it, and so no sequels. But number four was he was like a supporting character training up this guy that had some supernatural abilities light up hands yeah yeah he's been in so yeah early in his career he does scream Two. he does live free or die hard yep where he's kind of that same guy he's kind of like he plays a psycho character essentially who's got like cleverness he's smart but he's a little unhinged very underrated die hard i would agree and then deadwood and justified kind of usher in his cowboy phase yeah, and then he was in that zombie movie. The Crazies? Yep. Oh, I forgot about that one. That one was pretty interesting. And the zombie Netflix show with oh, Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Santa, Santa Clarita, Clarita Diet. Diet. Yeah. That was funny. But correct me if I'm wrong, the Lantern Corps is basically space cops. So while he may still be in his lawman comfort zone, they could obviously... If it's James Gunn, give him the opportunity uh, to... Well, this is interesting. This brings up an interesting question. Cause let's pose it to the DC superfan. Are you okay with Hal Jordan having a little bit of the Timothy Oliphant's uh, sentimentalities? Just bending his character a little bit to reflect more of a Timothy Oliphant's guy, character. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So James, James Gunn, you heard it. You're you're good to go. I'm not like completely endeared with Hal. Hal is like the most famous of the Green Lanterns, but like, eh, he's okay as a character. He's not like beloved to me. There are people that are like, you don't mess with Hal. Yeah. You want to know the key to the lanterns? I'm not even a DC super fan, and I know this. This is what the original movie got wrong, because the original movie had the perfect actor for this part. The one you need to nail, the character you need to nail is not a Green Lantern. The character you need to nail is Sinestro. Mm -hmm. And they had Mark Strong, who was perfect, and they did not nail the character. He's still around, though. Yeah, Bring him back. Well, J- James Gunn has shown a propensity for, like, he doesn't really care. About I'm good with him not caring. About the weirdness and continu- continuity as far as actors. So bring back Mark Strong as Sinestro. I thought he was great, but the, the character was written poorly, and I think he's the key to that whole story. All right, we're going to play the movie game coming up next. It's been a few weeks, but Jackson's here. Cody's here. A movie game coming up next. It's time for a rematch of the ages. Jackson Chauncey versus co-host Cody. We can do that as a, just your regular nickname. Yeah. Um, the man of I'm a more thousand chill. nicknames. Cody he might be Hamlet. temperamental Cody by the end of this, but we'll see. <laughs> Cody doesn't take losing well. I don't. Cranky Cody. Cranky Cody. That's a good one. Cantankerous Cody. Yeah, cantankerous Cody. We got to keep him alliterative. I think that's the key. Anyways, it's time for the movie game. The movie game exploding in popularity among the listeners. Sweeping the nation. So listeners, pay attention because I know you're playing from home or in your cars or wherever you're at. This might be one of the more challenging uh, additions of the movie game we've ever done. Since the first one. (laughs) All of these three movies I think you'll have heard of and were in the public consciousness, but they're not... Like we've had a couple games in a row where we had the easy knockouts, men in black, you know, something to do with geek culture too, where they were just, there were simple ones. These are going to be a little tougher. This might be difficult. So we'll see what happens, but Jackson, you're the guest. So I will let you select first. I'm holding uh, in front of me as rated on Rotten Tomatoes critic score, a 6% movie. Oh, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> a 41% movie and an 87% movie. These are awful. Why are they awful? It's the same as always. I don't know. I feel we've had them in the 50s and 90s. <laughs> yeah, I will say the 41% is a lower mediocre score. It's probably the lowest mediocre score we've had. Ugh. Let's go six. Six percent. He's going for the really bad movie. He's trying to gain all the bonus fan points. (laughs) All right. So, you know, it has a 6% critical tomato score. The movie came out in 1994. Do you have a guess for the level one flight for Jackson Chauncey? No. No, he has no. Cody has written down Ed Wood. (laughs) I'm pretty sure Ed Wood got a better than 6% critical score, but good guess. Yeah. Um, Okay, level two, you'll get the second build actor, the legendary Andy Dick. (laughs) I may have overblown the legendary, but at least you know who that is. Oh, everyone knows Andy Dick. (laughs) 6% critical score. A really bad movie in 1994 with second build actor. Second build actor. Yeah, second build. (laughs) Uh, Let's go again. He has no guess. We move to level three. The audience score, 44%. It Uh, goes up quite a bit. Cult favorite. Uh, (laughs) Cult, uh, we're okay with it. I would more, that's more accurate. (laughs) So how many more guesses do we have? That was just level three. If you, you got like two me, more. You've okay. got two more. So level four, you'll get the top build actor. And Let's it should, go again. It should help you out a little bit here. Uh, the top build actor is Polly Shore. Oh. Polly Shore in a 6% critical 
Rotten Tomato score in 1994 with the second build actor, Andy Dick. So you know it's a Polly Shore movie. Yeah. That limits it to like three guesses for me, and one of them I've already eliminated. The movie Cody always makes me watch whenever I come to his house, <laughs> son-in-law. That's a fantastic movie. If you're going to have to watch a Polly Shore movie, I would suggest it it's be It's required. Son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> but that is not the movie we're looking for. If that had a 6%, I would, I would question Rotten Tomatoes. I'd be like, no, no, no. Look here. Son-in-law has heart. Okay. Level five. This will be your last guess, and I get to do the blurb voice. <clears throat> Two dim never do wells join the U.S. Army Reserves in the hopes of earning easy money, but they get more than they bargain for when they find themselves in combat. I'm going to go down swinging. Is it in the Army now? It is in the Army now. Solid guess on a pretty difficult, uh, pretty difficult one there. So, so build Andy Dick. <laughs> <laughs> The legend of the second billing. I was going to say, that's not chairman of the board. No. no. And what was the one that's he did Carrot in court? Top. Was it jury duty? Yeah. Oh, that, that was, movie yeah. was so bad. Polly Shore and Carrot Top are interchangeable for me, even the, though they're vastly <laughs> different. <laughs> jury duty was the end of Polly Shore. Um, okay. Yeah. Cody, you're left with a critical Rotten Tomato score movie of 41%. Or one of 87%, which would you like to solve? We'll go 87. All right, he's going for the good one. I'll put this one over here in case we need a tiebreaker. 87% Rotten Tomato score. Movie came out in 2005, so a good movie in 2005. The Village. It is not The Village. I think that's a solid guess. He said good movie in 2005. (laughs) 87% might be a little high for The Village, but I don't think it would have been panned. First half of The Village. Ouch. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I think it deserves a rewatch. You might have another opinion because I think on rewatch, I didn't find it as bad. Level two. Now you will get the second build actor. This is interesting. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal and an 87% critical uh, score that Uh, came out in 2005. The Edge of Tomorrow. Was he in that? No. no. <laughs> Jackson says no. Don't let Cody see that. Okay. It is not that one. Jackson guessed uh, another movie, which I will not say because Cody, we don't want to narrow it down for him. Because that is an actual Jake Gyllenhaal movie, not like The Edge of Tomorrow. Like um, he just guessed. I get I get The Edge of Tomorrow in another film confused. <laughs> it's a Tom Cruise property. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Level three, the audience score goes down. Down to 82% from 87% critical score. Uh, Do you have another Jake Gyllenhaal guess? The day after tomorrow. Solid guess. You got a Jake Gyllenhaal movie this time, <laughs> so that you're, you're getting closer. Progress. That is not it. Level four, the first build actor, and this is this is when Jackson starts to sweat because this could throw, throw it to Cody's side and win him the game. The top build actor is Heath Ledger. Oh, Heath Ledger broke back mountain. It is broke back mountain. I didn't know if he would have been top build or second build. I'm just sad I couldn't do the blurb on that one. But Cody wins this edition. Yeah, of the movie. Game. I think he should lose a guess for the edge of tomorrow. <laughs> I award you negative with- one point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> movies with tomorrow. I miss up so and my guess for anyone who cared was october sky it was it was a jake gyllenhaal movie. that was a little early i well, feel my brain tells me that's toby mcguire still so that's <laughs> my tom cruise why so many of them actors be looking alike it's a toby mcguire joint <laughs> all right when we come back it's time for our pop culture draft best fictional football players of all time coming up who needs real production are you ready for some football yeah i'm ready for some football boom everybody's having their fantasy football drafts and i thought you know what we should do a fantasy football draft we did no 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 not 
one like all the other people do. We should do a pop culture draft where we draft a three person team of fantasy football players of fictional football players and try to get the best team with two bonus categories. I'm ready for this. Are you ready? I am. Okay. Jackson, are you ready? I'm present for this. Ready might be pushing it. <laughs> we're just going to talk through it. Basically, here's what's going to happen. We're going to we're going to decide the order. When I say decide the order, I mean the little spinner on my phone is going to decide the order and then we're going to go. We're going to we're going to pick our top 3 fictional football players. They can be from books, they can be from movies, they can be from uh, TV shows, video games, whatever, anything pop culture. All right. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to try to explain. We're going to talk it out. So, yeah, I guess all we need to do is, yeah, spin the wheel. Are you ready? I am. This is this is crucial. This is a crucial and probably the best part of the podcast. Here we go. Drum roll. Uh, I don't have it on spin. I have it on deactivation mode. Hold on. There we go. Oh, well, looky there. It's me. I get to go first. Uh, actually, I think <laughs> Jack and I are excited we both that you that. are going first. Oh, you wanted me to go first. Yes. Okay. Interesting. You got to. Is this because tone. you're going to ruin the show? Yep. You're not taking this seriously? Sabotage. I right. need a tone setter. All right. The second pick will be followed by. Is it JC? It is Cody. Cody is the second pick. So that's how we're going to do it. I will go first. Oh, my. I got an ad. See, I didn't pay for the real. <laughs> I didn't pay for the real the real app. Donate to our Patreon, folks. <laughs> we don't have a Patreon. Uh, but maybe we should. Okay. Whew. This, all this pressure, and I can take whoever I want. I've got several guys in my A tier. But I think since I'm the first pick, I'm going to take someone I think you guys would take. How dare you? Because I I want some of my A tiers that I think will slip. I'm going to leave them alone. So I'm just telling you how I'm thinking. So I will take from the movie The Water Boy, Bobby Boucher Jr., middle linebacker. (laughs) Middle linebacker from an Adam Sandler movie. Listen, you want to know why? You know, I don't have to tell you why, because I could tell by the disappointment on Jackson's face that he had Bobby Boucher on his list. Raw power. Mm, yeah, you're not getting better than Bobby Boucher. When he steps on the field, he's like a hurricane in cleats and with no prior experience. So he's only going to get better. Yeah. He, his tackles are so powerful, they might as well come with a warning may cause serious injury sign because he does. Like he's injuring people left and right. Uh, and so much so that college, Division one college football players are literally running away from him. He plays with ferocity and intensity. He's genuine. He's got a devotion to the game and to his team and to his mama. And to water. And to water. <laughs> making, making him a character you can't help but root for. Uh, plus, who doesn't love a good mama quote? Um, he also has a devotion to Captain Insano. He loves Captain Insano, loves professional wrestling, which obviously is, an, is a nice little bonus for our group. He hasn't come close to his ceiling yet. He's untrained. Dude has, he's done no weight training, no drills to improve himself in any way. This dude's a monster in waiting. He's going to be in the league. He once said what makes him so great is that when the center snaps the ball to the quarterback, he tries to tackle him unless he gives the ball to someone else that he tries to tackle that guy. And it's amazing to hear the greats talk about their strategy. Um, South <laughs> Central Louisiana State University Mud Dog. The Mud Dogs. Mud Dogs represent... Uh, one of my other favorite quotes, uh, uh, quotes is when the coach asks him if he'll play football and for him, and he says, Coach, not only will I do it for you, I, 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 yes, yes, I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a great movie. You guys like that movie? So that's my favorite Sandler movie. The, the Water Boy. Uh, amongst the comedies, it is my favorite Sandler movie. It's up there for me. I know people are like, Oh, Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore. I love The Water Boy. Yeah, it's really good. And I can't decide why I liked it so much because I watched that repeatedly. Um, I love The Professor in it. Something's wrong Colonel with your... Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Colonel Sanders. I was like, Professor? Who's the... Pro- oh, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Mama. 
uh, is great in it. And then, of course, Vicky. Mm-hmm. Vicky Valancourt? Yeah. Yeah, you got to say her whole name because that's how she's introduced. It is. Vicky Valancourt. So we're leaving out Farmer Fran, the special teams coach. <laughs> yeah, Farmer Fran, who talks like Gambit in the Dead in the Deadpool movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. So that's my first pick, Bobby Boucher from The Water Boy. Jackson or no? No, Cody. it's not Jackson. My, my, don't you suck wow. me here? Cody is intense. <laughs> He's taken over the show now. <laughs> Cody, who is your number one pick? So Bobby would have been number one. I figured Forrest Forrest Gump is my number one overall pick. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Forrest. He was on my A tier. Forrest happened to be born with some developmental disabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, he his, had magic shoes. He had magic shoes. Legs didn't work quite right. And then one day he just learned to run and he never stopped running. Yeah. And he ran all the way to the University of Alabama. Dude, that's no joke. Played for Bear Bryant. Yep. Roll Tide. And all he does is win. The dude's just a natural born winner. And also, it doesn't hurt that he was played by a one Tomas Hanks. I am going with a quality ground and pound game. We're going Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. I mean, with that speed. Yeah. Now, technically speaking, he was All-American return man. Yes. On kickoff returns. And he could also be the running back. Yeah. But. You figure you could you slot in speed like that wherever you can. Just ask Andy Reid. Yes. Jackson, do you have any thoughts on that pick? Oh, I was surprised Cody forgot he also taught how Elvis how to dance. Uh-huh. Yeah. He served in the war. He, I mean, he's a war hero. Olympian. Yeah. I mean, he's a ping pong champion. What Dr. else do you Dr. Pepper need? enthusiast. Oh, dude. <laughs> he gets invited to the White House and drinks his weight in Dr. Pepper. I mean, who does that? And... I literally think Dr. Pepper sponsors college football just because of Forrest Gump. I, I do have written here because he was in my A tier. He illustrates the power of perseverance mm. and, and the impact of seemingly ordinary individuals achieving extraordinary things. He's a lover. Yeah, he's a good character. His football career is just one highlight in a life full of remarkable achievements. Yeah. Some people, that might make some people jealous. Like, how does he get... He came up with the hat, the smiley face uh, logo back in the 80s. He did. um, (laughs) Made a movement where people were running across America. (laughs) Like Michelle Obama's jealous because kids weren't playing like that. And made a bunch of people uh, my age do really bad impersonations. You ever been on a shrimp and boat? No, but I've been on a really big boat. (laughs) I am not a smart man. They called out a million dollar wound, but I ain't seeing nickel that money. Yeah, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> I'm going to stop. This is bad. Jackson, who is your first pick in the fictional football pop culture draft? I'm really surprised Forrest went off there. I thought I had a hidden gem that I was going to bring to the table. <laughs> so now that we've had to shuffle a lot of papers here, my first pick is going to be Steamin' Willie Beeman. That's yeah! a solid <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Cody got excited! I was hoping someone would pick him first round. You, so <laughs> you know what's funny is I tried to watch some clips of that movie because I couldn't remember any given Sunday. That's the movie it's from, the Oliver Stone football flick. And I was trying to watch them because he's on my list, Willie Beeman, because I think it's a good pick. I forgot how vulgar that movie was. Gosh, yeah, none I of it I can clips. say on this show. <laughs> uh, you won't be hearing quotes. <laughs> uh, so tell us, tell us why your pick is Willie Beeman. Well, Willie was a third-string quarterback, rushed into duty after Cap Rooney and Tyler Cheravini were both taken down. Third-stringer! Came onto the field, threw up. I could identify (laughs) with him there. He was fueled on invisible juice. (laughs) You couldn't see him. You couldn't feel him. He was elite. Took the Miami Sharks to the playoffs. Learned some lessons along the way and a whole lot of other things that, again, can't be shared on this show. Quality quarterback, definitely somebody that stood the test of time with the prima donna role that's normally meant for receivers. Yeah. Uh, Played by Jamie Foxx. Yes. Brilliantly, by the way. Was that his first big role? Yep. Yeah. Straight from the Jamie Foxx show and in 
Living Color. Because yeah, yeah. he's in Living Color Guy for the longest time. And then I think it's that role that kind of catapults him into leading man status. Well, and I watched an interview last night when preparing for the show. Uh, and he said that he was labeled as a TV show guy. So he created the Willie Beeman music video as a way to stand <laughs> out with Oliver Stone. And I had intended to sing it until I looked at the lyrics. And <laughs> yeah. I'd like to be on you another lost episode. Out. That so. was one of the things I watched. And yeah, yeah, you can't. There's not a three second clip of that I could play. It's bad. It's really bad. But uh, yeah, so Willie Beeman, just as a player, let's just look at him as a player on the field. Yes. The dude's Between like. Between the white lines. He's amazing. He's got the athleticism. He can throw the ball. He's like an artist on the football field. He's like a combination of Mike Vick and Da Vinci. That was what I put in my notes. He's amazing. This, this quote is my favorite quote from the movie I'm trying to win, coach. I ain't trying to disrespect nobody, but winning is the only thing I respect. That's the kind of guy you want on your team. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, maybe. Maybe you want that guy on your team. I don't know. I think that's a good pick. Willie Beeman. Time for the second round. The second round of picks. There's Ooh. only there's only one guy left on my A tier. As the other guys. Oh, they, actually, there's two guys. So I'm going to go to the realm of video games. That's right. I'm going video games. If you go Bo Jackson, I'm kicking you. I am going Tecmo Bowl Bo Jackson. Thank you, Dave. As my second pick. He was a real dude. He was real, but not the Tecmo Bowl version. Uh, the Tecmo Bowl version it was clearly fictional because he was unstoppable. Like, listen, my friends, when we played Tecmo Bowl, we literally made a you can't be the Raiders rule because he was so good and so dominant, which no one would ever make that rule in real life because the Raiders suck. But not Bo Jackson. We just lost all our Las Vegas fans. Ouch. It's simple. The, the strategy is simple. You hand the ball off to Bo Jackson. Then it's up to you know, whether you want to score in a straight run down the sidelines and just outrun everybody. Or if you want to do that zigzag tech mobile thing for about an hour, just for fun. You, you go into clock, run the clock and zigzag all the way down the field then back up the field and then back down the field and score. Because then you, you do two things. Not only do you crush the opponent but you crush their will to live and never play that game again. Give the ball to Marcus Allen. That chump? No. Jabroni. Hall of Famer? Don't care. <laughs> I'm giving it to Bo. Marcus never touches the ball if you're playing Tecmo Bowl. Marcus gets buried on the bench. <laughs> no, he's out there. They put them both out there in Tecmo Bowl. No. There was always one play. You could yeah. give it to Marcus. I highly suggest you do not select that play. <laughs> never do it. <laughs> all right cody i took your pick you did not oh because i'm going with a fullback um picture fullback it. you guys have heard of the gatorade national player of the year trevor lawrence won that award trevor uh, lawrence of he he of the flowing locks yes but that didn't come around till the mid 80s 1966 picture it's the city championship four Tutties, as the kids say. <laughs> Al Bundy from Married with Children Al is Bundy. My pick. A uh, high school star athlete, unfortunately, had to put it all away because he became a family man. Although I have seen him play in rec baseball and like be in the infield. Someone hit the ball clear to the warning track. And he robbed them of that home run. So was the knee really that injured? They had a episode where he was playing like rec softball or baseball. And then he, 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 yes, he and the kids like, who is that guy? And an old guy in the stands is like, that is the legendary Al Bundy. <laughs> so he's, he's the quintessential one hit wonder. Um, as far he, as we know. Yes, but he also is a multi-sport athlete, as I just described, like the Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. If you are in dire straits, championship is on the line. I don't want anyone else touching the ball. Yeah. Just to be clear, here's the stats. He, high school football hero scored four touchdowns against Andrew Johnson High to win the city championship back in 66. That he's been reliving ever since. <laughs> Against his rival, Bubba Spare Tire Dixon. I forgot about Bubba Dixon. <laughs> also a big name in the uh, high school football world. 
Yes. That's and, a good pick. And shockingly, the actor really was a good football player back in the day. Yes. So Ed, what was his name? Ed O'Neill. O'Neil. Ed O'Neill played professional football, I believe, in NFL. Yeah. I don't know how long he played. Probably not long, but you know, he's he's up there with like other celebrity football players who was at least on a roster. Goldberg from wrestling. Good times dad. Or coming to oh, America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, Jones? No, yeah, the good time, good times. Amos. Oh, John Amos. John yeah. Amos, yeah. Chief. He played for the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Someone should have picked uh, the good times, Dad. <laughs> yeah. All right, Al Bundy, that's a solid pick. Jackson, who is your second pick in the fictional football draft? So for my next pick, as long as no one has bacon in their pocket, no car doors shut, and nobody calls them a good boy, Son of a gun! <laughs> we are locked in with Air Bud Golden Receiver. Ah! <laughs> Jackson! I did not think we were going to get an Air Bud reference that would cause that much frustration. Oh, Air Bud is phenomenal. Now, do I have to put in the entire name? Golden it could Receiver? Be, yeah, yes. Golden Receiver. Because he plays multiple sports, Dave. <laughs> I Air did Bud. have to confirm that I didn't make up an Air Bud football movie. <laughs> All right. Please tell me about Air Bud Golden Receiver. Low center of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Can run for days. Great 40. Yeah. Great, great time in the 40. Especially if a squirrel's around. <laughs> if he does his business right before game time, you know he's going to have a, at least 100 yards. Yeah. Locked in. So does he catch the ball? I've never seen Air Bud Golden Retriever. Yeah, yeah he does. How does he? Oh, you said that like, <laughs> of course he does. Of course, does. Dave. How does he catch a football? How does he dunk a basketball? How does he catch a baseball? Dude, that's not even the same. He just does. <laughs> the other two are so believable. <laughs> Those are biographies, Dave. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> They're about. They're biopics, literally based on true you stories. You did say we could use real life scenarios. Yeah. I did. And I took you at your word. Air Bud Golden Receiver. Anything else? Anything you'd like to add to that, Cody? Phenomenal pick. That was the pick I was going to sabotage this whole show with. (laughs) So I'm glad that you'd pick that because I don't think Dave's going to pick my third pick and I will sabotage the show with this one. Oh, really, fool? You don't think so? What if I did? I might. I might rage quit. Just walk out. All right. There okay, so I kind of see Cody's strategy. I kind of see Cody's strategy, and if I I'm gonna write down something right now because I think I know who he's gonna pick. Now I'm gonna stay away from your pick. I'm okay. just writing it down because I think I know who you're gonna pick. I'm gonna leave it there face down. My pick is from the television show Friday Night Lights. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I knew I told, somebody I told was you going I wasn't gonna route. take your pick. I am selecting Tim Riggins, Tim Riggins from the TV show Friday Night Lights. One of my all-time favorite episodes is when one of the kids, like, if, look, if you've never been around Texas high school football, it's like a religion down there. They're serious about it. So this was basically a documentary as far as I'm concerned. There's an episode where the kid, a kid is following him around the whole episode, calling him by his full names. Hey, Tim Riggins, Tim Riggins. And I just thought that was hilarious. So I just throw that in there. But Tim Riggins. Is a fullback, and I believe a linebacker. I think he played both ways. Uh, But I know he played fullback, and he's the epitome of grit and resilience. Had a tough upbringing. Parents aren't around. He's raised by his older brother. He plays football with the same raw intensity that defines his character. And he's going to give his teammates everything, because that's really all he has (laughs) is high school football. And because it's Texas forever. Texas forever. That was the big thing that he always said. Uh, just don't expect much from him in the classroom. When Riggins is on the field, you can sure he's leaving everything out there. Be not, not, he's not, not, he's not bringing taking any there. of it with him to the classroom. One of my favorite quotes, there's an episode where he takes injured quarterback Jason Street. He wants to take him to Mexico for the day on a school day. And he asks him, how did you get out of class? He says, uh, I told him I was pregnant and I just needed a few days to relax. That's that. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's the true ingenuity teammate right there. You can use that to get out of work, potentially to go to Mexico. I don't know what your plans are, but you can do that. Tim Riggins, Friday Night Lights. That's my pick. 
That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Man, my team's killer. Okay. Cody. So go ahead and pick the thing I've written down on the paper that's face down. This person before none of mine were pros. But I'm going into the NFL this time. Maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm I'm wrong then. I thought you were gonna go silly. It might be a bit silly. You know what we need in to win games? And I've seen good it, players? I've seen it multiple times in the Chiefs dynasty. You need a solid kicker. Oh and this kicker taught me the most valuable lesson in kicking at a really young age. Former Miami Dolphin great. <laughs> Ray Finkel. Ray Finkel, <laughs> who also <laughs> possibly might be Einhorn. <laughs> yes. So, star kicker of the Miami Dolphins, formerly. <laughs> he uh, became the senior lieutenant of the Miami Dade Police Department as well. Yep. But he became a lot of things. During an infamous game known as the Super Bowl. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, I'm aware of this one. Um, they went against the, the Miami Dolphins, went against the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, they, that's who they were up against. And um, the Dolphins had the final play, a field goal to win the game. Mm -hmm. And that bum, Dan Marino, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, the Hall of Fame quarterback, <laughs> Dan Marino. Uh, did not spin the laces out. Uh, he disagrees. I'm just saying, Dan Marino uh, says that's not true. Laces out, Dan. <laughs> if the laces would have been spun out, he would not have missed it wide right. So I'm about redemption arcs on this team. And we are redeeming not only <sighs> Al Bundy, but Ray Finkel, who has some really cool hobbies <laughs> and some good skills, um, police training, cunning, exceptional strength. Good speed, strategy, highly skilled gunmanship, hand-to-hand -hand <laughs> combat. Works with Tone Loke yes. as a detective. Living the dream, really. Did not like Snowflake or Dan. <laughs> or Dan. <laughs> Is Dan Marino the bad guy in that movie from a certain point of view? Yes. Uh, by the way, if you haven't caught up, Ray Finkel is from the movie Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Yes. Oh, my goodness. As soon as you sent... This is what the draft would be. I'm like, Ray Finkel might go number one. <laughs> he was not on my list. I totally forgot about Ray Finkel, probably because he missed his biggest kick ever. Uh, he led them to the Super Bowl. <laughs> was very proficient. Just asked his mom. She has all the films. <laughs> oh, my God. Jackson, who's your third pick? For my third pick, obviously... <laughs> Willie's going to need some protection while he's looking for Air Bud downfield. Uh, <laughs> I love that you thought this through. <laughs> and for my third pick, I believe you will all think it's a 10. It's a 10. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going with Billy Bob. Billy Bob from Varsity Blues. Billy Bob is a all a ten. heart. He's, he's a 10. He's willing to leave it all on the field, literally, even if he doesn't leave the field. First for <laughs> best friend Lance Harbor, and later for Jonathan Moxon. He's got <laughs> pig named Bacon, and he loves that dog. Just willing to sacrifice all of it for the glory. Now, I got bad news for you. He's lost a little b body mass to be on the line. He's much smaller now. Have you seen He's this? He's also dead. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> He lost He's a lot lost of weight. A lot of weight, Dave. <laughs> I didn't know he died. When did he die? Good while ago. Oh, he had the gastric bypass, and I was so happy for him. I didn't know he died. That stinks. He's also Reggie Ray in not another teen movie, so see, technically I'm covering both bases here. Gone too soon, Billy Bob. But that's a good pick. Uh, do you have any other uh, other reasons for drafting him? No, I've got the best offensive line of the three of us. Billy Bob was a monster. Yes. Yeah. Um, he carried, literally carried suit. that team. Yeah. In Varsity Blues. You think you think Dawson from Dawson's Creek was going to lead you to victory? No. He doesn't want your life. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is so quotable. Such a quotable movie. Um, all right. So we're through our top three picks. Our three picks for our 
fictional football player draft. Now, so what did you write down? What did I write down? Oh, I wrote down Becky Icebox O'Shea from the Little Giants. Was <laughs> she on was, your list? If Ray Finkel had gotten drafted, Becky was up next. So <laughs> Spike was on my best available list. Spike. He was the Oh on the little on the Giants. Cowboys. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. remember Devon Sawa's character, but I already got my quarterback anyway, so Yeah. Um, okay, it's time for us to draft a coach. Okay. Best coaches and i am gonna stick to a show i already referenced with one of my picks i'm gonna bring along his coach the best coach not just in football but any coach coach eric taylor from friday Night oh Fights. you didn't go with the coach that i would have gone with no I, there's no other coach Coach, anyone who's watched Friday Night Lights knows Coach Eric Taylor is the coach. You're going to be upset when I draft my coach, though. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to be upset because I got my coach. Okay. It's Eric Taylor. He's not just a coach. He's a shaper of young men and maybe the best dad ever. Coach Taylor has a knack for delivering motivational speeches that resonate deeply with his players. Such quotes like, opportunity does not knock. It presents itself when you beat down the door. That's just wisdom. How about this one? Every man at some point in his life is going to lose a battle. He's going to fight and he's going to lose. But what makes him a man is that in the midst of that battle, he does not lose himself. I don't even know what that means, but I know I'm inspired. I'm about to run through a brick wall, aren't you? He told a young Michael B. Jordan, listen to me. I didn't say you needed to be better than everyone else. Strive to be better, not be better, but you got to try. That's what character is. It's in the trying. You thought that wasn't going to make sense, but it did. He pulled it back. And behind every great man, every great coach, there's a great wife. Tammy Taylor, most supportive, strongest wife that a coach could possibly have. Friday Night Lights, Coach Eric Taylor. He's my guy. Okay. So I'm not taking Jackson's. I already know that because Jackson hasn't seen what I'm going to reference. All right. He hasn't, he hasn't seen it? He hasn't seen it. How do you know it? that? I, I like cause... that you know my life. Um, there's <laughs> you don't know my I don't want your life <laughs> you there, don't know my there's life there's two buttons I never like to hit that's the panic and the snooze okay is that a quote it is ice cream is the best it's kind of like seeing Billy Joel perform live never disappoints oh I know I hear you national championship winning coach of the Wichita State Shockers Ted Lasso the ultimate motivator of young men and older men that feel like they might be on the way out. If I'm being honest, I forgot he was a football coach. I did not. <laughs> I figured you guys would make the football soccer comparison at some point, so go for it. Well, no, he was literally an American football coach. Yeah, he took he, Wichita State national to, championship. Yeah, I'm and just, an un, an unexisting team. Oh, yeah. Wichita State hasn't had a football team since 1982 80s. or something like that. And I've seen an episode and a half of that, by the way. Oh, what is wrong with Thanks you? Thanks for the credit. What are you doing with your life? There's so much media out there, Dave. Uh, not like Ted Lasso. I got kids. <laughs> um, I promise you, there is something worse out there than being sad. And that's being alone and being sad. Mm -hmm. He's such a good advocate for mental health. Absolutely. Especially... Uh, when he goes public with his mental health struggles, uh, he has panic attacks. He also struggles with the the death of his dad, his wife divorcing him. But then he he chooses family. He's a family guy at heart. He, and he honestly made his football club um, one big family as well. Uh, taught me some valuable li or lessons like... Be a goldfish. All the things from the Diamond Dogs Club. And I assume with me drafting the head coach, I bring his assistants along. And you get I get staff? I get Coach Beard. <laughs> so, um, guys, game over. Game over. <laughs> coach Beard, uh, Roy, Roy Kent, and Nick. Nathan Shelley. I think that's fair. I think you get the right. staff. I'm a little mad that I forgot he was a football coach and didn't consider him because he might have been my pick. But I'm not unhappy with my Eric Taylor pick. Jackson, you get the last pick, <laughs> so you're going to lose. Don't mind me bringing up the rear like always. Because I don't know how you top that. 
I don't well, know how you top Ted Lasso. You guys have all your inspiration and your heartwarming. Oh, he's going X's and O's. I have none of that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to Varsity Blues with Coach Bud Kilmer. Oh, oh I would have wow. gone Coach Klein, but... This man is willing to sacrifice any kid that he has to <laughs> to keep winning those 22 district titles and those two state championships. Uh. <laughs> Lance Harbor, get that knee out of here. John. Billy Bob, what's another concussion? <laughs> John Voigt at his absolute villainous best. But yeah, he's, you can't argue with the record. No, it's whatever needs to happen to get results. He's like the Al Davis of Texas high school football. Just win, baby. Yeah. There's no inspiration. There's no heartwarming. You don't feel better afterwards, but you win. It's the glory. By the way, do you know the uh, there is an actor in Varsity Blues who also appears in the TV show Friday Night Lights? You said his character name. Tommy Harbor. Oh. Uh, played by Jesse Plemons, who plays Landry in Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's Matt Matt Saracen's friend, uh, played by our good friend, um, Zach. Zach. What's his name? <laughs> our good friend. <laughs> Zach. That guy. Zach G. We're, listen, we're his favorite podcast. He says so in our intro. Zach Based Guilford. Which, which wasn't prompted out of him at all. That was just a random recording of him saying that, which you guys are talking about. Yeah. Um, good pick, good pick. Now the only thing left to pick is the best ending to a football movie. Best ending to a football movie. Was that was that what it is? Or I didn't just say sports movie. I, th- I think I, I you said football. It. So best ending to a football movie, and you can you can uh, define that any way you want. Okay, I'm going to sabotage this one as well. You're <laughs> <laughs> um, my pick is from a little-known movie starring Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce Willis in an action movie, by the way. Football is the backdrop. It also stars one Damon Wayans. To uh, keep going with that in-living color connection. I almost took that running back on my team because he's willing to do whatever at the beginning. (laughs) The movie The Last Boy Scout is your standard 80s buddy action flick odd couple type thing you got serious bruce willis and then damon wayans who's like the outlandish star quarterback of the football team but the ending to this movie is so bonkers this is a real movie allegedly about real football (laughs) based on a true story here's the ending of this movie i'll just i'm gonna i'm gonna say it as emotionless as i can possibly say it at a game Ex-NFL quarterback Jimmy Dix, played by Damon Wayans, prevents an assassination attempt by throwing a football that knocks a senator out of the way of a bullet. That's a, that's a pressure throw. The would-be assassin is then shot by police at the top of the stadium, thanks to help from Bruce Willis, and he falls into the blades of a helicopter. I believe that throw is while he's on horseback, too. <laughs> we can't leave that part out. What's the post-game press conference sound like at the end of that game? Uh, Hey, did you see that guy fall into the uh, helicopter blades? That was gnarly, right? What a throw by that guy, though. Seriously. He hit the senator right in the noggin. Got him out of the way. (laughs) That's that's some that's some force on a throw, because I'm guessing the senator weighed at least two two honey. So, yeah, last Boy Scout, best ending to a football movie. It's the most bonkers ending, but I dig it. Cody. So I'm going to go. With a movie that I have only seen once, and it's been forever. Mm-hmm. This is a good ending. You can't use Miracle. That's hockey. <laughs> Just messing with you. Go. This movie stars Robin Williams. Oh. The best of times. The <laughs> best. Jackson is upset. <laughs> he is upset. <laughs> He's throwing things. Um, Tell me why the end of the best of times with Kurt Russell, so, Jackson's favorite actor, is your pick <laughs> for the best ending to a football movie. Cody's so pleased with himself. I've never seen him laugh like that. So anyway, I mean, you have two high school rivals replay 
a game 20 years in the making, and Robin Williams is wide open. Hail Mary to win it all. And so, like, you know the ending. You know what's coming, but they film it so beautifully. And that, yeah, it's yeah. just good. It feels good. And you have the best actors in the their prime. Uh, one, Robin Williams and Kurt Russell. Yeah. I don't want to say that game was rigged, but how does Robin Williams get that open on a Hail Mary? <laughs> he that bobbles. Spin move. <laughs> yeah. You should be giving him plenty of space. He should be spinning with no hurry. <laughs> when Reno Hightower has his white shoes on, he delivers. <laughs> <laughs> Reno Hightower. I forgot about that movie, but clearly Jackson did not. I'm completely unprepared. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jackson. So Cody is just pleased that he stole Jackson's. Pick. I had a stone cold lock and I was just waiting <laughs> for it. Yeah. Well, Jackson, now you got to come up with an end to a football movie that you find enjoyable. I think there's plenty to choose from. We've talked about many movies here today. There's some we haven't talked about that would be good picks. There's one in particular I'm thinking of. Yeah. That I think is a good pick that we have not referenced today. That is a really good feel-good ending. Well, then it wouldn't be Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> I had considered that one. Poor uh, Heinz Ward. We do not speak of Heinz Ward. <laughs> He lost all his teammates. Nothing? Okay. Wait. I will throw some your way, Jackson. Oh, we're going to help him? What? There's no. two choices. You stole his pick. This is what you've done to our pod. <laughs> yeah. But, look how he, I just can't get over how happy he is about it. I have a feeling he looked at my paper or something of the sort. Cause... All right. Just off the top of my head. I'm going to go with, uh, you've already hit the TV show a couple times, so I'll go with the movie, uh, oh. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. I yeah. feel that was one of the first movies I ever watched where it didn't go the way you thought it would. Yeah. It's a Rocky ending. Yeah. Yeah. And, made famous by Rocky. You know, I was waiting for all the conventions. You get the halftime speech. Everybody comes out, house of fire, but it's still not enough. And I think that's important for movies because you play out that same ending over and over and it just becomes repetitive. Uh, and it's to show like there's still winning and losing or success in losing that it's not all about the win. It's the journey to get there. Yeah. It's funny because in sports, they're, the coaches are fond of saying there's no moral victories. And yet... There when, are. When we watch movies, it's clear the end of Friday Night Lights, you feel good for them. Like, you feel sad they lost. Uh, but Rocky, when he when he doesn't win against Apollo in the first movie. He just wanted to go the distance. Right. So th it's weird that when we watch movies, we understand that there is something in your individual moral victories, right? Uh, but the coaches, they just want their players to win. And it's kind of satisfying, too, to see them lose because John Voight plays such an evil dude <laughs> in Friday Night Lights. <laughs> the movie. Yes. I'm a little partial to the TV show, but that's a great pick because of the subversiveness of you're expecting them to win on the last play. And well, they don't. That's why I suggested remember the Titans. They don't win. They lose. Do they? I'm 95% certain they lose. No, I think they win. He no. had to go undefeated to keep his job, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Remember the Titans? They win all the games. They lose in the championship. They have to make the championship. Go undefeated to win. So they lose in state? Well, now you're making me look this no, up. No, it's this entirely possible. No, no, I'm... they win. They win all the games. Because I, I feel they lose and right. they have to. We're going to let the we're gonna let the fans chime in on this, the listeners. Let well, us know in the well, comments. Let us know in the comments. Don't, don't, have don't to. Google it. Because this is where the. Uh, tell us what you think of the, who would you have drafted in the fantasy football pop culture draft. I'm just hurrying up so Cody can't say the answer after he Googles it. Because I want everyone to point out how wrong he is. This has been Titans pop culture. Titans State. Titans won State. Yeah. Okay. So you're wrong. I was. I didn't say I was 100% right. Point so proven. Saw that movie 83 times in school. <laughs> Ditto. Let us know who your picks would be. Uh, vote for which of us you think 
got it the most right. And of course, uh, make sure and tell Cody how wrong he was in the comments below our social media posts. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>